life and light in my salvation. Amen. Shall I be? Lord is the strength of my life. Mm. Shall I be? When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, came against me, but even my flesh, I stumbled and fell. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, let us rejoice and be glad in it. I woke up this morning with my mind. I woke up this morning with my mind Staying on Jesus I woke up this morning with my mind Staying on Jesus Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah Woke up this morning funeral home in the country. It just keeps things in perspective. Let's be nice today. Let's show the love of God. Will you kindly just look at somebody close to you and tell them good morning. Good morning. That's nice. Somebody. I'm going to say good morning. And tell somebody it's good to be with you today. It's good to, it's good to be with you today. Oh yes, it is. I tell you, this is the Congregation of Church and Christian Fellowship, and we have four principles that we try to, to be guided, uh, to try to guide us. And simply it is to honor God. Mm -hmm. That's the worship piece. Uh, to develop Christians, that's the discipleship piece. To connect people, that's the love and peace. And then... Uh, similarly, to love everybody. Would you say the word everybody? Everybody. That means all of us. And all means all. That's all all means. I want to welcome those of you that are here for something special. We want to dedicate a beautiful baby boy at the right time, in the right place. Amen. 
And in the meantime, I just found out that you could be dressed up on the outside and feeling kind of messed up on the inside. So let's just take all that off today. Huh? Take it off today. Let it go. Yes, sir. Be free. Can you just, in your mind, take off stress and disappointment? Take off bitterness fight against sorrow. Mm -hmm. So glad to see Brother Ashley here, Sister Dura, Sister Lola, Brother Keith on the, or on the drums, and Keith Lee on the organ. I'm so glad to see each of you. Let's pray, God, thank you. Send a fresh wind. Let these who are participating in worship be so filled with your spirit that as they minister, you'll be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen.
Ours to call of God and use to answer we. We're reminded, O oh God, of what we learned in Jeremiah. Where you call unto me and I'll answer you. Show you great and mighty things that you know not of. God, we thank you today that we can call with the confidence. Believe in you for a blessing. Somebody will call awaken with some burden. By the beauty of this day, just burning God, shackled, limited. I'm praying, God, that you would set somebody free right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I know, God, this building has been erected unto your glory. But without your presence, we have nothing but beautiful walls and windows. We want the beauty of your presence. Uh, we want, oh God, the beauty of your power. Won't you come by here, oh God? Mm -hmm. Hear our humble cry. Touch God, just like on the day of Pentecost, golden tongues of fire rested on each one. I'm so glad that you love us without exception. Love us, oh God, when we ain't even bothering with you. Love us, oh God, when we're falling and failing in sin. Love us, O oh God, when we're riding in right standing. I thank you, God, today that you'll pour out a fresh blessing. We trust you. We trust you. And then, God, somebody's got something so serious they haven't even shared it with anybody but you. Holy Spirit, have your way. Work it out, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't you can't look at somebody and tell them you're going to be all right. Let's stand all over the church. Get your hands clapping. You know, I think it would be a shame 
within a crowd this size, somebody came to church that was dealing with something that, and it didn't get addressed for whatever reason, you know, just slipped through the cracks. I just want to let you know that if you'll trust the Lord today, He's a, he's a way maker. Do I have a witness? Amen. Amen. If you trust the Lord today, not only is a way maker, oh, he's a healer. Am I right about it, Brother Bill? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. Right. The old folks used to say, I've been through the storm and the rain. But I don't I just wonder if somebody wants to stand and Come on up here and just share a little minute or so of your testimony. I know that's old fashioned church and you know sometimes I can get get a little a little interesting, but I just believe today somebody might want to share something unto God's glory. If that's you, I just want you to slip your hand up and we'll call you down. You can say a few words today. Anybody wanna help somebody else with what the Lord has done? You wanna share it? Anybody wanna do that? Yes. Come forward, please. Come forward, please. Let's clap our hands for Sister Lord. Amen. Yes. 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 Good morning, church. Good morning. Um, I just want to share with everyone. Some people know, some people don't, but that I've been having an issue with lupus. And um, I went to the doctor on Wednesday, and the doctor told me that I, the lupus is still present in my body, but it's not active, so it's sort of in remission. So I want to thank God for that, because I was really worried about that. And that's, that's why I said God is really awesome. That's all I could say to me. He told me that. He was like, just, you know, you're doing good. Not to say that it won't come back, but right now, you know, I just want to live and, and grow and just be healthy for my grandkids and, and everyone else. So I just thank God for that. And I thank God that my Shane is home. He's home safely. He's back with me. And that was a big piece of my heart going. And then I do want to ask the church for prayers for my niece that had her premature baby. She passed away on Wednesday. So I'm going to pray for a little Everly. She's a couple of months old. So I just want to pray for the family. who's her first baby. So I want to just ask prayers for her. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> Jesus. And you just can't keep it to yourself. So, come, please. Let's clap our hands for our sister. As she comes. God allowed me to continue to excel in my career. 
God blessed me with a husband, Amen. two children, Amen. after 40. Amen. What can my God do? Yeah. What can my God do? So now, thanks to Pastor, I occasionally review God's resume yeah. with me personally. Yeah. And I see the, the wonderful things that he's done, things that I didn't expect. So my testimony is, don't be like me. Don't put limits on God. Amen. Just pray and trust and be grateful. Let him do what he does. And be grateful. Beautiful. Church, say amen. 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 You expect a preacher to say it, but when you see somebody that lives in your neighborhood, does the same kind of work as you do, that means if God is in, in the neighborhood, you might be next in line. Huh? God is blessing your neighbor, God is in the neighborhood. Amen. Come here, Brother Smitty, and tell us about the goodness of the Lord. Don't make that face. Just come on. I can see you behind your mind. Come on over here, man. As good a talker as you are, you can tell us about the Lord and how He's blessed you. Clap your hands for Brother Smith. Brother Smith.
promised the Lord is that I would do my music ministry. I haven't been able to do that lately. And uh, so I was pleased um, when Ashley asked me to sing this morning. Because you know, when I came through the doors, I felt the Lord. I put on the choir robe and made it up those stairs. And I looked out and I didn't see that many people. But you know, I knew the Lord was here. And so when he asked me to sing, I said, you know, the song that I need to sing this morning is on holy ground because the Lord is in this house this morning. Amen. As I walked through the door, I sensed his presence. And I knew this was the place where God abides. For this is the temple, Jehovah God Almighty. And we are standing in His presence on holy ground.
Good day to be a child of God. Can you say amen? amen. And thank those of you that made adjustments in your busy schedules to be here on the Sunday morning to give God what God certainly deserves. Open up your Bibles to the book of Galatians. Galatians. Galatians chapter 6 shall serve as our teaching text today. Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. Let me encourage you to be a student of the Bible. I declare if you'll just read, you'll be surprised at what the Spirit of God will do when you ask God to show you. Thank you. What it is that uh, God will show you. And, he'll, and God will do it. Oh, yes, He will. And let me just encourage you to take some time out of your busy schedules uh, to spend with the Lord in the reading of His Holy Word. Galatians chapter 6 shall serve as our teaching text. I want to thank uh, those that are helping today to get this broadcast out. It'll probably uh, show up in a couple of days on, on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, but I just want to remind you, uh, no sleeping allowed because you're on camera. Amen. <laughs> yeah, pick yourself up. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. I really could start reading from verse 1, but today I'm just going to focus on, on, on a couple of verses. Chapter 6, verse 9. And the Pew Bible is a little different than most of you raised on the King James. This is called the New Revised Standard. Uh, but I'll share it in both ways. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Uh, verse 9 says, So let us not grow weary in doing what is right. 
For we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all and especially for those of the family of faith. I remember it from the King James. Be not weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. We shall reap if we don't give up. I'm going to share a little message this morning. I want to simply call it, the best is yet to come. Say it with me. The best, the best is yet to come. Yet to come. Say it with some conviction. The best, the best is yet to come. I want to ask you a question, sister. I want to ask you a question, brother. I want to ask you this. And you might not be able to spend a lot of time answering, but I want you to publicly ponder today. When's the last time you cried some tears? When's the last time the sorrow characterized your existence? When's the last time you had to pull over if you were driving in the car, sit down if you were in the comfort of your home, and let the tears flow? I suspect for many of you, there was something that happened this week that bothered you, that burdened you, that stopped you in your tracks, that arrested your attention. Maybe, just maybe, God opened up the floodgates in your eyes and the tears moved down the fullness of your face like unto the rivers, Tigris and Euphrates. When's the last time you had a hard cry? When's the last time you struggled with your teeth? I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, one of the questions that I get asked as a pastor is, where do those sermons come from? What is the genesis? Where do they come from, preacher? And I will tell you that most times something has happened in the week that stopped me in the tracks. This week, I know there was a tragedy right here in our neighborhood at Schlosson and La Brea. That's enough to make you cry. But it was something else that got my attention that caused the tears to come. Brother Keith Lee, I was at a mentoring event and I was sitting at a table with a young man who unfortunately there have been some things in his life that were difficult to hear about. And he said to me that he was wondering, he wanted to ask me as a pastor, why do I think we should pray? Because it seems like there's a whole lot of people praying and our streets are still filled with violence. It sounded to me like this was a young man prior to his 16th birthday that had lost hope. Would you say the word hope? hope. Would you say it again, please? Hope. It felt like to me that because life had, if you please, if you please, dealt him in his mind, a, a, a raw deal. He was essentially saying, my hope is not what it should be. I don't seem to believe that this thing is going to get any better in my lifetime. And something about a hopelessness in a child was enough to make me cry. Do I have a witness? Because we don't expect children to be in a state of hopelessness. You remember how it was when you were a kid? I remember when I was a kid, I thought I could do anything, including fly. We had some friends in the neighborhood and we got up on the roof one day and tied the jackets around our The hearty expectation that we were going to be able to fly. We were <laughs> sorely disappointed. <laughs> but it's something about a child. Mm -hmm. had a hearty belief. It's something about a child. Mm -hmm. And not only do children have a hearty sense of hope, but the parents of the children, yeah, and the grandparents of the children, yeah, and the godparents of the children, yes, and the community, when God blesses a, a family with a child, we have a great sense of hope, and we believe that, you know what, my little boy can do anything, amen. My little girl can do anything, my little boy 
can become anything. My little girl can become anything. For children, we have a hearty sense of hope. Let the church say amen. amen. So today, in just a little bit, we'll bring forward parents and godparents and grandparents and community members and concerned friends and loved ones and a community of faith and which will dedicate to the Lord a beautiful blessing. We have a sense of hope. And with God's blessing on the baby, everything is going to be all right. Can you say amen? amen? Oh, my sisters and brothers, I got some good news today and I'm glad to share it with you. Yes, there's hope for Caden at this time of his life. And yes, we have a hearty expectation. But I stopped by to tell somebody today, yeah. I stopped by to let you know that for Caden and for all of us, whoo, the best is yet to come. Say it with me. The best yes. is yet to come. Yes. Come on, say it with some gumption now. The best yes. is yet to come. Yeah. Yes. I got a sneaking suspicion. I got a belief down in my soul that something good is on the way because God sits high and looks low. Something good is on the way because God is well able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could have. Is there anybody here today that based upon what he's done already for you, you know that the best is yet to come? Can you say amen? amen. You've already shown promise. It's already obvious that you're gifted and Full of God's blessing. Ah, but I've come to let you know that I believe that the best is yet to come. We're living in a day and age, sisters and brothers. We're just walking down the streets. You can tell that some folks are full of hope and full of faith. And then some folks are full of doubt and full of fear. And as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ... I want you to put on your Jesus team jersey. If you're a tatted person, I want you to get a tattoo that represents for Jesus on your heart or on your, wherever you want to put it. huh? But I just want to let you know that as ambassadors for the Lord Jesus Christ, we ought to be hope givers. Let the church say amen. amen. We ought to be those somebodies that when we come in the room, people just say, it's something about you, sister. It's something about you, brother. That makes me feel hmm, that my life is going to get better because of you. Can you say amen? amen. And so I found this passage of scripture in Paul's letter to the church of Galatians. They're called Galatians. And in this fine portion of scripture, I find that the apostle Paul is showing great leadership skills. What's happened is, is that the People of Galatia have kind of lost their way. They've gotten off track a little bit. They've been believing false teachers and, and following foolishness. And the Apostle Paul has a bit of sternness in the book. The Apostle Paul lets them know that there's some things that we got to do if we're going to get back on track. Galatians is that area where the Apostle Paul talks about living by the Spirit. Say the word Spirit. Spirit. And living by the flesh. Say the word flesh. flesh. I remember years ago, sisters and brothers, I preached on the fruit of the Spirit. And I called the sermon, Are You Fleshy or Are You Fruity? <laughs> and I, I laughed and some folks didn't. <laughs> But I need you to know, sisters and brothers, that if you're going to see the best of God in your life, you're going to need to exhibit and have evidence the fruit of the Spirit, love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and generosity and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. Let the church say amen. amen. So I need to let you know that in this Book, this letter called Galatians, there's some rich meat, some fabulous food. I want you to take a little time to read just six chapters before you go to bed tonight. In the early portion of chapter six, it talks about if somebody is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual, restore such a one with a spirit of meekness. In verse six, it talks about those who are teaching the word should receive all good things from those who are being taught. Verse 7 is a verse that you all remember. Do not be deceived. God does not mock what you reap. You'll reap whatever you sow. 
And thereafter we find the verse that I want to harp on today. Uh, let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season, at just the right time, you shall reap if you don't give up. Be not weary in well-doing. Say it with me. Be not weary in well-doing, for in due season, you shall reap if you faint not. Best is yet to come. What preacher do you see? In one verse of scripture power pack today, it seems to me, brothers and sisters, that there's some words that will start with A that I hope will help you as you try to think about the theme. Uh, the first thing that I want you to pay attention is to what it says. Don't get weary. Let us not grow weary in doing what is right. If you want to write something down today, I want to let you know that the best is just to come if you focus on your attitude. Say the word attitude. I know, brothers and sisters, many of us have seen people that have gifts. Many of us have seen people that have abilities. Many of us have seen folks that seems like God has disproportionately blessed them with gifts and abilities, but they got a funky attitude. Can you say funky in the church? They've got a sour spirit. And soon as a little adversity comes, they throw in the proverbial towel. But today I stop by to tell you, as you're thinking about the theme today, the best is yet to come. I'm going to ask you to check your attitude. Make sure that you're not falling into that place of weariness. Check your attitude, sister and brothers. Know that if you're going to be about something, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy for Canaan. It's not going to be easy for you. Whether you're 10, 20, 30, 40, whether you're 80, 90, it doesn't matter. At every stage in life, you're going to receive some contrary wind. But I heard Apostle Paul says, I'm pressing towards the mark or the prize. High calling of God in Christ Jesus. Say it with me. Attitude. Attitude. He says, don't be weary. But notice the text says, in well doing. Alongside the word attitude, I want to ask you to consider the word actions. Notice he says, don't be weary in doing what is right in well doing. If we're going to get to that place where we're saying the best is yet to come, if we're going to believe by faith that good days are coming, that blessings are on the way, yes, we've got to look at our attitude, but similarly, we've got to look at our actions. It doesn't say in well thinking and well believing, both of those are necessary, but this text says, whoop, in well doing, there's got to be some actions. One of my former mentors said, pray like it all depends on God and work like it all depends on you. Can you say amen? Amen. Am I right about it? You're going to fulfill your potential. Are you going to be the woman, the man that God believes in you to be? Yeah, you got to have the right attitude. Yeah. But you got to have the right actions. For some reason, I've been thinking about health lately. As you get older, things start you know, not working like they used to. Oh, yeah, I have like it all the time. Well, let me just preach to the set. I know. You know, sometimes I just have the right attitude, but my actions don't match my attitude. I believe that I'm going to get up and take my exercise properly. <laughs> I believe that I'm going to eat better. I believe that I'm going to make the right choices. I go to bed believing that. And I even set my shoes out in the morning, you know, in the nighttime before I go to bed. I, 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 I've got every thought uh, uh, set aside that in the morning I'm going to do the right actions to match my attitude. But sometimes, brothers and sisters, all the attitude in the nighttime is dissipated in my actions in the morning time. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And I just want to remind you today, I know this is not deep and profound, but if we're going to meet our full potential, 
if we're going to be the ambassadors and the representatives for the Lord Jesus Christ, we just not got to be talking about it, we got to be about it. Can you say amen? amen. I remember it was a fine football player, Marshawn Lynch, and they asked him about coming out of retirement. And they talked about getting ready. He said, I don't have to get ready, I stay ready. And that's about actions and attitude. Let the church say amen. So that I don't help you to go to sleep today, just say the word attitudes. Say the word actions. Be not weary in well doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Notice the text says, in due season, at just the right time, sometimes I found in life that, that we're just on a positive trajectory. We're moving onward and upward. Seems like everything is going our way. And then sometimes it seems like everything is going the opposite way. And sometimes it just feels like we're flatlining. But I need you to know that God's timing don't always feel like your timing. Can you say amen? Wait on the Lord and be a good cheer. He shall strengthen mine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They'll mount with wings as eagles. They'll run and they won't be weary. They'll walk and they won't faint. But I've been living long enough and I just want to be honest and say what you're feeling. But maybe not saying. Sometimes you got to get tired of waiting on God. Yeah, it might, it might not sound right, but I'm just going to be honest. Sometimes I'll be saying, God, yo, God, you seem like you're late, God. I've been watching everybody else getting blessed. It seems like you're late, God. And you might deem that to be disrespectful, but when I read my Bible, I find the psalmist asking God, yo, God, what up with it? That's the ghetto translation. <laughs> I just want you to know we've got to consider our attitude and we've got to consider our actions. And I wish I had an A word that, that, that got it straight, but I don't. So I just want you to remember that God's timing is God's timing. Say it with me. God's timing God's is God's timing. God's timing. God's Could you say it again, please? God's timing God's is God's timing. God's timing. But I used to hear the preacher over the water say, it ain't not come when you want. <laughs> He's always on time. Amen. I mean, that's why the Bible says we walk by faith and not by faith. Christ didn't make that up. That's in the Bible. And indeed, sisters and brothers, sometimes we can see it. It seems like the timing is off. It doesn't seem you've been waiting too long. It seems like things ain't working out. But remember, God's timing is God's timing. The text goes on to say, in due season we shall reap if we find not. Why do you think the Apostle Paul had so much confidence that the best is yet to come? Why do you think that he could write with an economy of words, such a powerful message that in due season we shall reap if we faint not. I believe it has something to do with his attitude. I believe it has something to do with his actions. But I believe that first and foremost, the Apostle Paul got this part right. Here's the last A word it is attachment. Say the word attachment. attachment. Say the word again attachment. Attachment. You see, it seems to me that there's a confidence in this particular verse of Scripture because the Apostle Paul knows with whom he is attached. He has a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. He's got the power of the Spirit inside. He's attached to the one who's the difference maker. And I believe somebody here today that knows that as you're hooked up with Jesus, everything's going to be all right. Can you say Amen. There's a confidence that you have when you're attached to Jesus. Can you say amen? amen. Speaking of confidence, as I get ready to take my seat, and it seems to me, brothers and sisters, that when somebody says the best is yet to come, that you're going to feel something that will well up in you and say amen. And then unfortunately, there'll be something that will rise up in you as well and say, ah, I'm not too sure. But the Pentecostal church would say the devil is a lie. Amen. 
Don't believe the accuser or the adversary. And throw your shoulders back, lift your head up, speak to yourself. Every now and then I get in the car and pull down the vanity mirror and look to myself. And I say the best whoo, is yet to come. Sometimes you got to encourage yourself. The preacher might not be there. Your loved one might not be there. But God will meet you and you'll just declare the best is yet to come. Why? Because of your attachment. Say the word attachment. Some of you in here are involved with athletics. Some of you in days past were, and some of you are right now. And one of the things that I know is that sometimes you have a confidence that you shall be victorious in the game just because of who's on your team. Am I right about it? You see it on TV sometimes, the coaches drawing up the play and Star player is kind of listening, but all they want to say is just get me to rock and we're going to be all right. Am I right about this here? There's an attachment to a winner. I come by to remind you today that it's great to have the last name you've got. It's great to be from the family you're from. It's great to represent the neighborhood that you represent. But your best and most important attachment is that to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I remember Kirk Franklin used to sing silver and gold. Silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. No fame or fortunes or riches untold. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. And when I first heard that, I said, Kirk Franklin is tripping. I'm so glad that I've grown up to understand the song that preceded that one is by Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to me. Let me see your hand if you're attached to the Lord today. I'm not ashamed of it. And I find that when I ask that question, sometimes people raise their hands. Sometimes people raise their hands rather sheepishly. If you're here today, And you don't feel like you're attached. You don't feel like this applies to you. If life has battered and beaten you to the place where you feel like, I'm not sure, Pastor, that the best is yet to come. If you're in a downward progression, you would say depression characterized my existence. I need you to know that God is still answering prayer today. God sees you and God knows you. Let's stand all over the church. Will you stand? Come to Jesus.
the best is yet to come. Even as we have hope for a beautiful baby boy, each of us, God, each is, is looking for a, a reminder, please. Give us that confidence that our best days are ahead of us, no matter what stage of life we are in. Create within us, God, clean hearts, renew within us a right spirit. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've already done. Bless us some more, I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's clap our hands for the goodness of God. Thank you for participating. But days ago, one of my dear friends who's a preacher in Kansas came by. I'm out of town and sat over dinner. And he reminded me, no matter what our pastors have to do, we're tasked with winning souls. Amen. Can you never forget. You know, you want to encourage. Yes, you want to equip. But it'd be a tragic situation if we forgot about the work that Jesus did out on the cross. Can you say amen? amen. It really was, huh? A lot of things going on in buildings called churches. And I'm very well aware that it's easy to get off track. Let's never forget the moral mandate of the Master. Go and make disciples, disciplined learners. Amen. Amen. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things that I command you. And lo, I'm with you always. So today, uh, if you don't know, Do yourself a favor. Don't let anybody, a preacher with the problems like me, mean missionaries, hateful folk in the church, don't let anybody stop you from getting right with God. Amen. Because the adversary will come and say, He ain't right. She ain't nothing. And you'll miss your blessing. Behind talking about what somebody else is doing. Amen. If I go to my grave tonight, I want you to know that the Lord loves you so much and He's willing and able to make you right with Him. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands for the Lord Jesus. so very much for listening. Um, we offered an opportunity for uh, uniting with the church and first and foremost uniting with the Lord. The church is going to be here next week and the week after that too. The church is going to be there when you need it. And the Lord is going to be there all the time. And so stay close to the Lord. Say the word attachment one more time. Attachment. Thank you so much. At this time, I'm going to ask you to consider giving. Consider what you know from the sacred text about biblical stewardship. That's a fancy way of saying. Ask yourself, what do you believe about giving as it relates to, you, to your Lord? Scripture would say, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, run over show. Men and women pour into your bosom. The idea is that you've got a basket, hear me, and it's setting up against your bosom. And the idea is that if, if, if you give, it'll be given back to you. But check this out. Good measure, that means a whole bunch. Yeah. Check this out. Imagine that it's some beans, like some pinto beans. 
Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Or maybe I need to come down differently. Red beans. Black eyed beans. Give and shall be given unto you. See the bucket up against your bosom. Good measure, that means a whole bunch. Press down, whoop, and then if you shake, shake the beans, guess what? There's gonna be room for more. Run it over. Whoop. God's got a blessing with your name on it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about today? I found it to be true to you. You can't beat God giving. So let's prepare and tithe and, and give offerings, please. Let us pray. God, thank you for the blessing. Thank you for a visual prompt of that. We can't beat you giving. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
have community. And uh, and uh, when you're a part of a community, you're glad when good things happen to members of your community. Amen. You're happy about it. And something good has happened. The Lord has seen fit to send a beautiful blessing. And, uh, and what we're going to do now is to take some time out of the busyness of life and celebrate the occasion, but more importantly, do what some call a christening or a baby dedication. And so I'm going to ask those of you that are here for that occasion, uh, uh, to come forward and we'll do that and then we'll do the Lord's table. So parents, godparents, well-wishers, praying folk, anybody that wants to, come on down, please. Come, please. Does not mean that those of us who do not have children 
And I'm blessed with God because all of us are blessed with God. Can you say amen? amen. But today we come to honor God and to dedicate a beautiful child to the Lord. And I want to say to you all who are here that the first thing that I'm going to say is to the parents. And then I'll say something to the godparents. And then I will say something to those of you that are gathering on these stage today. I want to say to grandparents too, you're blessed when you have some grandkids. Amen. What a blessing. Let me say that you remember how Jesus views the children as an example of coming to the kingdom of God. And there's something about the way that a child does life. You remember how I talked about that hearty faith that children have that they can do something with it? Let's believe that for Caden Luther Waters. Luther and Pamela, I want to ask you a question. Will you provide Caden an opportunity to get to know the Lord? and to live in his kingdom, the kingdom that Jesus announced as kingdom rolled up. If you will, will you say, we will. Amen. Will you do all that you can to provide kingdom and love you so when you say, for the family, if so when you say, we will gradually intentionally train kingdom. Will you gradually intentionally train kingdom to make wise decisions according to his needs? At each stage of his childhood, if so, when you say, we will say to you, God, parents, I want to say to you, God, parents, clearly you all have a special gravity of the You know the gravity of the society would say something. The society would say something, but the scripture would say something. So I ask those of you that are so I will ask those of you that are considering yourselves and it's important to know what you support Lamar and Tiana will be able to support them without the truth and with Pamela, without the truth and to fulfill and we will. The promises are so you say we will. We will. And will you help this child to grow and mature? And will you will help this child to grow and mature in many ways if so when you say we will. All of you that are standing here, grandparents. All of you that are standing here, grandparents, committed family and friends. And your name. Will you do? All that you can to support with your family and their reign a beautiful family. We do all that you can to pray for them, and encourage them, and support them in good times and in challenging times. If so, you say, I'm going to have an adverb enthusiastically. <laughs> we will! We will! We will. That's not me. I don't know if I need to do that again. You all will pray, help, and do all that you can for this beautiful family. Will you say enthusiastically, we will. We will. Let us pray. Gracious God, I will thank you for these promises. We thank you for this father and this mother and this beautiful family, siblings and godparents and grandparents and such, and a beautiful community. We thank you, oh God, for one called Stephen Luther Waters. And as I prepare to anoint him, oh God, and dedicate him to you, I pray that something would happen in the unseen realm that is manifested in this world. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah.
Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for this beautiful gift. I thank you, O oh God, that you have brought it forth into the world to fulfill beautiful purpose. Good. I pray, God, that you would bless him. Even now, God, spread a fresh blessing as this oil evidences the presence of your spirit. Even now. And God, even now, as I lift him up to you, symbolically giving him back to you that which you have given to Luther and Pamela and this beautiful family. We trust your God for blessing over his life. Holy Jesus. Oh God, from the crown of his head to the soles of his beautiful feet, bless him in every way. And we dedicate him without any reservation in Jesus' mighty name. Those who agree to the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you. 
into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for
thank you all for your presence. I'm going to participate in this ritual symbolic today. We realize that unfortunately um, we had a little mistake and we don't have enough elements, so I'm sorry about that. The blood of Jesus symbolized in the cup the body of Jesus too. Take, eat the bread with thanksgiving in your heart. Now reveal the, the juice in the cup that symbolizes the blood of Jesus Christ. What can wash away our sins? Nothing but, but the blood of Jesus. Please drink now with thanksgiving in your heart. Thank you. These who are serving the table today will aid you if you uh, would, would want to uh, 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 pass your cups down and we're going to sing one of the old songs. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. Before we leave, I'm giving you lots of opportunities to ask the Lord. Anything pressing? Surgery this week, traveling, something significant. Let us all stand. Uh, Pastor? Yes. I'd just like to remind everybody that it's Youth Sunday, next Sunday. And uh, I don't know if people have gotten their accomplishments for their young people to Jane, but we want to celebrate. And bless our children next Sunday that are going back to school next week. Please get your information. Our children are important to us. And we need to make sure that we send them off to the school year. Um, right. So please get to G next Sunday. Please be there for our children. So we can bless our children and send them off to the year. Right. Amen. Let's all stand. In my hand is a cookie. And this is from Lura's Kitchen. And, uh, and uh, she 
doesn't have enough for everybody today. But I love Lori Daniels Ball, and I don't love that she's trying to fatten up her pastor. It's not fat enough. But I want you all to know that she's purpose to, to take her blessings and try to advance the Lord's work. And so there have been occasions indeed where a portion of the revenue goes to help for this tower project and such that you'll learn more about. I'm going to ask you please to consider the Church of Christian Fellowship as a place where you can come at any time. And what you will find is that we're going to honor God and we're going to do our best to develop Christians, to connect people and love everybody. I thank you. I feel real good today. I think we've experienced something beautiful. Thank you. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank now you. unto him. Oh, I just want, I'm sorry. Yes. No, it's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. Uh, you guys are traveling grace. I want to travel in grace for my son and his family as they travel to Europe for the next two weeks. It's very important. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Lola and her love for her family. And I thank you, oh God, that uh, she knows enough to ask your blessing upon her son as he does something important. And we just pray for Lola. We thank you for her love for her family. Bless her boy as he, her son rather, as he travels uh, across the country, across the world rather, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Now the end that's able to keep us from falling, present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and evermore. Amen. Amen. Greet somebody with the love of God in your heart and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.